Hi everybody, it's Michael and I'm already back again with another one of my walkthrough videos because I have again the new Stefan Feld game, this time in Spurge, which I want to share with you and show to you by playing a full three-player game. Uh, yeah, Brugge or Bruges or Brugge or whatever it's called in all the different languages is uh, the second game from Stefan Feld to come out this year. This one is from Hans and Glück. It's the German version right here. I think Z-Man Games will put out an English version at some point. The game is language dependent because there's it's a card game basically and there's a lot of text on the, on the different cards. The box says that it's for two to four players, ages 10 and up, and that it takes about an hour to play. Um, since it's a Stefan Feld game, I don't think I need to say much about it. Uh, the, the interesting thing is it's a card game, which is apart from maybe Roma 1 and 2, um, new for Stefan Feld. Um, it's very much in the vein of, I would say, Sun 1 or Race for the Galaxy, where each card can have different purposes. And I actually think I remember um, watching an interview with him on Klickenabend, where he said that this game was inspired by Glory to Rome. Um, well, I guess that's it. So without much further ado, I will step right into the game. Have fun watching. As always, let's start with a brief look at the components first. First, maybe the most important thing of all in the game, the cards. For a three-player game, we've taken three-fifths of the deck, split them in two, and these are draw piles, and the remaining two-fifths are an extra pile that we'll only need when one of them, when one of these runs out, but then the game will be over anyway soon, so basically we don't really need these others. Then we have the board, where we have some dice. Over here we have the town hall, where each player has a marker to later on uh, move along the reputation track right here. Then each player has their section with a guardhouse uh, from which on they can build canals. If you do the canal building good enough, the city will be very happy and build some statues for you. And these can be found right here. Then we have a scoring track where each player starts at the 5 space. Over here we have a supply of different things, money, workers in 5 different colors, canal tiles, and then thread markers in 5 different colors. Down here we have some reference cards. And finally each of the players starts with various things. The yellow player is the starting player. He has 5 money, one of each workers, and finally three majority markers with their grey side up. And then we're already off into the first round. And the first thing that happens each round is that you draw cards and you draw as many cards as you need to get your hand back to five. So in turn order, starting with the yellow player, you get to draw five cards. And the, and the special thing is that the backs of the cards actually show the color. So right now we have a blue and a yellow card available. And you just draw five cards without looking at them. And I found that it's a good idea to change the colors a little bit. So the yellow player takes two blues, a yellow, a brown and a red. And the others will just do about the same. Next up is the rolling of dice. And the star player does this, so the yellow player rolls the dice and just places them here in ascending order. Now, two things happen. The first is that we look at the dice with the high numbers, 5 and 6. So we have three of those, and for each of them, each player will get one of the thread markers. So we have a yellow, a brown, and a blue 6. So each player will get a brown, a blue, and a yellow thread marker. And if you take a closer look at those, they each build one third of a complete circle. So as long as you as long as you have one, you're fine. As long as you have two, you're also fine. But the third one will always trigger a disaster or well, threat of some kind. The brown ones is rats, so the threat is a pest. Then the blue one is a flood. And the yellow one is a raid or riot of some sort. And if you take a look at the back, the brown one will have you lose a person. The blue ones will, lose, uh, will let you lose all your workers and the yellow one will let you lose all your money. So basically each player gets three of those. 
Next up are the lower numbers, the 1 and 2, and we add all those together. So in this case that's 3. And then, not unlike Macau for example, um, each player gets one chance to advance on the reputation track for that prize, in this case, in this case 3. And reputation track will go score points at the end of the game, depending on how far you moved. The yellow player decides to do this, so he pays 3 money to the bank and is on the first step. The blue player doesn't want to and the red player also pays 3 money and moves along the track. And then we move into the main phase where each player will play one of the cards in turn until everybody has played 4 cards. Before the yellow player plays a card, let's just take a look at how all these cards look and work. So this is a novice. Um, it doesn't cost any money to put out, consequently it doesn't give any victory points at the end of the game because the victory points are always a third of the price. And with each card you can basically do six, six different things and five of them are not really dependent on the card. And you see the those in the banner over here. But in this case he does want to have the person on the card because the effect is, is, is quite good. So the thing is each person needs to live in a house so we need to build a house first and for that we have to use another card. Obviously not this one because we want to keep it. So the other player decides to use this card to build a house which is as I said possible with every card and to do this you have to pay a worker of the same color as the card. So by, play, by paying a blue worker to the supply we can use this card as a house and we see it's a blue house now and also it'll give a victory point at the end of the game. And that was the first action for the yellow player, building a house. The blue player also decides to build a house. He uses a purple card and pays a purple worker. The red player would actually like to play this card, but first of all, of course, he needs a house, and then it'll cost six money, and he only has two left, so first of all, he has to get the money. And to get money, you have to play any card, because any card can give you money. And then you get as many money as the die of that color currently shows. So it would be good now for him to use a blue, brown or yellow card, because then he would really get lots of money. So what he does is he decides to get rid of this yellow card, discard it, and basically then he can take six money from the supply. Now it's a yellow player's turn again, and he can play now play the novice from his hand, into the house. And now her effect is active, and actually this lightning symbol means that her effect gets only activated once in the game in the moment that she's played, so basically now. And the effect says that right now uh, the yellow player can take one yellow worker and three money. Also one final thing on the card, right here, the novice has a category, which is in this case church, and other cards might refer to this category. The blue player also plays a card. He plays this gloss merchant into his house. That guy costs him three money and he has an effect that's always active and basically it says each time the blue player will take money. With the red die he'll get three money more and finally this gloss merchant is belonging to the trade group. And the red player builds a house with a red card. The yellow player also builds a red house. The blue player plays a blue card to take six money. The red player plays this cannoneer into the house. It costs six money. And the cannoneer has a one-time effect saying that the red player can return up to three threat counters of any kind to the supply and gain one victory point for each. So these all go back. The threats are mitigated. And the red player moves up to eight points. With his final action, the yellow player wants to build a canal and from his gatehouse he can either start in this direction with a yellow piece or in this direction with a brown one. So by playing a yellow card and one money he can put a canal piece on this space right here. And then if he continues to build canals in the next round he can either go over here with a brown card or over here with a purple card. And reaching certain spots will give you victory points at the end of the game. And if you get to the last point of one of these sections, then you'll be able to take the top statue tile and the points are decreasing. The blue player builds a blue house. 
And finally, the red player takes his chance, since brown will still give him a lot of money <coughs> to play a brown card and collect money. Now that each player has played four cards, we move into phase four, which is we check on the three majorities. What are those? Each player has three majority markers. One is for the town hall. So, so if any player would right now be in the lead alone on the track, he would be able to flip his marker over. This is not the case. The next ones are persons. If any player right now would have more persons than any other player, then those player would be able to flip over this mark. And finally canals. The yellow player is the only player to have built any canals. So he is now able to flip over this tile. And at the end of the game, this will give him four victory points. It doesn't matter if he ever um, loses this majority again. He achieved it once, and that's good enough. So this one will stay face up for the rest of the game. And now the first round is done. And basically the star player marker goes to the next player in turn order. The red player rolls dice. So again, everybody gets a blue, brown and yellow thread marker. For the red player, that's still his first because he already got rid of the ones before. But for the blue and yellow player, these are actually the second markers of each kind. So next turn, a disaster could happen. Then advancing in reputation only costs one money this turn, so everybody takes a chance to do this. The red player uses a yellow card to take six money. The blue player plays a brown card to get rid of one brown thread marker. So by playing this card he can discard the thread marker and also get one victory point. Because every time you get rid of a thread marker you get one victory point. The yellow player plays this leather worker into the house. He pays three bucks. And this one has an ability that can be activated with yellow workers. So once per round he can pay a yellow worker to trigger the effect which says he can take any worker that he likes from the supply. So, and triggering actions doesn't cost anything, so you can do this as part of your normal action. So we pay a yellow worker, we activate him by turning him by 90 degrees, so we know we can't activate him anymore this turn, and we take a blue worker from the supply. The red player builds a blue house. So the blue player plays this altar boy, which doesn't cost him anything, and gives him one brown worker and three money. The yellow player builds a brown house. The red player plays this guy into the house. That costs him nine. And this guy, if I translate the job correctly, is somebody who does chiselings inside houses on the walls, so basically making ornaments. But anyway, his effect is that it's always active. Each time when the red player builds a house, he may return one thread marker of the color of the house and get a point. So basically, if the red player would build a yellow house with his next actions, he could, for example, return this marker. The blue player builds a yellow house. The yellow player returns a yellow card to get six money. And now the red player has a bit of a problem because he has only red cards left. So he decides to discard this card to at least get three money. The blue player plays the abbot in this house. That costs him nine. And the abbot has a one-time effect, saying that you immediately get one brown worker and three points. So blue moves up to nine. And finally, the yellow player plays this blue card down here, that's an admiral, he costs him 6 money, which he barely has. And the admiral has an effect that can be activated with blue workers, and that is you can discard a blue thread marker and get a point. And since we traded for blue worker earlier, we can just make this happen by activating this card, paying the blue worker, we can discard one of the thread markers and also get a point. Nothing happens with the majorities, yellow is the only person to have built a canal. Both blue and yellow have three persons out, and nobody's ahead on the track. So we just move on into the next round, where blue will be the starting player. And the yellow player can turn up his cards again. The players have already restocked on cards, so dice are rolled. 
Everybody gets one blue thread marker. For the red player, that's fine. For the yellow player, it's fine because he just discarded one with the Admiral. But for the blue player, that triggers a disaster, meaning that he lose all of his workers. And those are returned to the supply. And then we don't have any ones or twos, so actually nobody can advance on the reputation track this round. The blue player needs new workers, so he discards a brown card for two brown workers. The yellow player discards a yellow card to get for money. The red player builds a brown house, and thanks to this guy here, he can also get rid of one brown thread marker, and thus also get a victory point. The blue player discards a red card to take money, and thanks to the cloth merchant, he can get three more. So that's six instead of three. The yellow player discards a blue card to get two blue workers, and then he takes one of them to activate his admiral and get rid of this marker here and also gets a point. And actually the scores should look like this. I made a small mistake there but now it should be fine again. The red player plays this trader for three and that guy can be activated with yellow workers so he gives up one and then he generates three money. The blue player builds a brown house. The yellow player discards a brown card to get rid of one brown thread marker and he also gets a point. The red player discards a brown card to build this piece of canal for one and the blue player gets rid of a yellow card to discard this yellow thread marker and get a point. The yellow player is also not very keen on losing all his money so he basically does the same and finally the red player discards a purple card to build another section of canal this time by paying two money. And this gives him the majority in canals, so he can turn this marker up. But apart from that, nothing changes majority-wise. And the yellow player becomes the starting player again. Everybody has taken their cards, and the yellow player rolls the dice. Everybody gets a brown and a purple thread marker that doesn't trigger any disasters. And then advancing the cost for money this round, and everybody decides to do this. The yellow player builds a purple house. The red player discards a brown card for six money. The blue player plays this profit, which costs him three. And then he can also activate the effect, which says that by paying a brown worker, he can get two money for each of his church character. And the prophet, and the abbot, and the altar boy are all church characters. So he gets six money. The yellow player builds a yellow house and also pays a blue worker to activate his admiral to discard the blue thread marker and get a point. The red player discards a red card for two red workers. The blue player discards a brown card to get rid of one brown thread marker. The yellow player takes two blue workers by discarding this card. The red player builds a red building. The blue player takes two brown workers. The yellow player only has a blue and a red card left and he needs some money at least maybe to buy an advancement next round. So he decides to discard the red card to at least gain two money. The red player plays this vicar, I think that's also an English word, um, for six. And then he can play a purple worker to get one point for each one that was rolled. So that's two points. And finally the blue player takes five money. And again, no majorities, so we move into the next round where the red player starts again. Each player gets a red and a purple thread marker. And again, nothing happens yet, everybody's fine. And then for two money, each player can buy an advance. And unfortunately, the red player doesn't have any money left, but the yellow and the blue player can't afford it. The red player builds a red house, and then he can discard this red thread marker. The blue player builds a brown house. The yellow player takes six money. The red player takes three money for a brown card. The blue player plays the chaplain for nine money. And he can immediately take one red worker and three points. And then if he pays a brown worker and activates his profit, he now gets eight money for four church characters. The yellow player discards one purple thread mark. Red player builds a piece of canal with a blue card for three. 
So at the end of the game he'll score 3 victory points. The blue player discards a red card to get 9 money. The blue player takes 2 yellow workers. The red player takes 6 money. The blue player also takes 2 yellow workers. And finally the yellow player builds a blue house. Then the yellow player is the leader on the reputation track. So he can flip over this majority tile. And the blue player is the only one to have 5 persons. So he has the majority on that one. So we have a blue and a brown thread marker. This could get interesting. So the third blue marker triggers a flood for the red player, but it doesn't have any workers, so nothing happens here. And then a pest triggers for the yellow player. So he has to get rid of one of his person's cards and he decides to choose novice. She doesn't give any victory points and her effect is already gone. So that is not too bad. And then everybody can advance for two money and everybody does that. The blue player plays a brown card to get rid of a brown thread marker. The yellow player takes six money for a brown card. The red player takes five money for a blue card. The blue player discards a purple thread marker. The yellow player plays this maid, which doesn't cost anything. Then he pays a blue worker to activate his admiral and discard this thread token. Then he uses his leather worker to discard a yellow worker to gain a brown one. And then with the brown one he can activate the maid, draw two cards and then discard two cards. The red player plays this fire breathing guy for 9. And that person's effect is very similar to ceiling decoration guy because uh, each time you play a person, you can discard one threat token of the color of the person, while this one does the same for buildings. The blue player builds a yellow house. The yellow builds a canal here for 2. The red player takes two yellow workers. And then with one of them, he can activate his trader to gain three money. The blue player plays this, well, vandalism guy. He costs nine. And he has an immediate effect that every other player has to uh, discard a house of their choice from their tableau. And if there's any person in the house, it goes back into, the, into their hand. So this is actually not too bad for the red player because he can just destroy this red house and take the cannon here back into his hand. And if he plays him again later on, then he might be able to again discard threat markers. And the yellow player has three empty houses anyway, so he decides to discard the blue one. Then the yellow player plays this spice trader, which gives you additional money when you take money for the brown die. And he pays three money to place him. And finally the red player discards a purple threat marker. And he has two cards remaining. But that just means that he'll only draw three cards at the start of the next round. <clears throat> After the draw phase, there's exactly one card left in one of the piles, so uh, we'll definitely play for another two rounds. So we get one red and one yellow threat token. And then advancement would cost four, and the yellow and the blue player can pay that, but the red player can't. Before he does anything, the yellow player uses his last yellow worker to activate the leather worker to get a brown worker. And with that brown worker he activates the maid to draw two new cards. And he decides to draw the red card. And because this pile is now empty, it is immediately replaced with the pile we put away at the start of the game. And also the next round will be the last. And then he draws a brown card. And he discards two. And then he discards a red threat token. The red player collects two blue workers and also uses his last yellow worker to activate the trader and gain three money. The blue player takes eight money. The yellow player takes five money from the brown die thanks to a spice trader. The red player builds a blue house. The blue player builds a yellow house. The yellow player takes another five money. The red player plays the cannonier again for six. And now several things happen. Since he played a purple card thanks to the fire breather, he may discard 
a purple thread token. And then the effect on the cannoneer lets him discard any three thread tokens for a total of four points altogether. The blue player plays the apothecary, which costs him nine. And that person has a permanent effect that the disasters occur on the fourth thread marker. So basically, uh, he's fine for the rest of the game because next round is the last round and the worst that can happen is that these two come out. The yellow player plays the cup bearer for nine and this guy has an endgame bonus. If you have five different colored houses, which the yellow player has, you'll get an additional five points. The red player takes three money and so does the blue player. And we move into the final round of the game. No thread markers come out. And advancing costs 3, but only if the blue player decides to do this. The red player takes 4 money. The blue player takes 2 brown workers and then immediately uses one for his profit, gaining 8 money from his church card. The yellow player decides to take 2 yellow workers, trades one of them into a brown worker and uses that one to activate the maid and draw and discard 2 cards. The red player takes another 3 money. The blue player builds a red house. The yellow player takes 3 money. The red player uses a red card to build this canal for 4. The blue player plays the king for 9. And the king at the end of the game, as you can see with this laurel symbol here again, uh, will give him 2 points for each noble in his tableau. Uh, unfortunately the king is the only noble guy in his tableau, but 2 points are better than nothing. The yellow player builds a canal here for three. And with his last action, the red player finishes this canal for five. And since he has now one complete district, he can take the first statue marker, which will give him seven points at the end of the game. The blue player discards a purple thread marker for at least one final point. And the yellow player discards a yellow thread marker. So we can now move into the final scoring. And before we start that, Blue and red are tied at 17 points, and yellow has 14 points. So the first thing that we do is we total the values for the persons. The red player has 3, 4, 6, 9, 11. The blue player has 1, 4, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17. And the yellow player has 1, 3, 4, 7. Next up are the houses, and each house is just worth 1 point. So the red player gets 5 points, the blue player gets 8 points, and the yellow player gets 5 points. Then we have the abilities of the persons with the laurels. The red player doesn't have any. The blue player has the king, which will give him two points. And the yellow player has the cup bearer, which will give him five points. Then we have the majority of the markers. Each one is worth four points. The red player gets four. The blue player gets four. And the yellow player gets eight. Then we have points for the channels. Three if one of the halfway markers was hit and the others for the statues. The red player hit one of the halfway markers and has also one statue for a total of 10 points. The blue player has nothing and the yellow player gets 3 points. And finally we get the points for the reputation track. The red player gets 4 points and also takes one of these 50 markers so we can remember. The yellow player gets 7 points and the blue player also gets 7 points. making him the winner at 55 points. And that was one complete game of Brügge. And that was it, a full game of Brügge. Well, I surely hope you enjoyed this. Um, hopefully I could show you how the game works, how the card mechanism works, how you have to carefully plan what to do with your cards, because you have to play for every round. It's not like in other games where you can just draw new cards uh, as, as actions, or um, can save all of your cards if they're all good, you, you have to play four of them. So hopefully by now you know whether this game is interesting for you. And that's basically it. Thanks for watching and until next time. Bye bye.